In this section we will describe and show the proper usage of the following repair tools. 1. Torque wrenches, including the deflecting beam torque wrench and the click type torque wrench. 2. Snap ring pliers. 3. Strap wrench. 4. Wheel puller. And lastly, the hydraulic press. Torque wrenches are required for pump maintenance. Almost all of the bolts associated with a pump have a torque specification assigned to them by the manufacturer. The impeller and foundation bolts are some of the most critical to torque correctly. A torque wrench is a device that measures the torque as it is applied to a bolt or nut. A torque wrench is crucial to avoid breaking bolts by over-tightening them or leaving them too loose. There are two types of torque wrenches, the deflecting beam type and the click type. Given a cantilevered beam with a length L and a force, F, that acts at the free end of the beam in a plane that is parallel to it. We can calculate the torque, T, due to the force at the fixed end of the beam. The component of F that is perpendicular to the beam is equal to F times sine theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the beam. The perpendicular component of F produces a torque that is equal to F sine theta times the length of the beam. In SI units, torque is measured in newton meters, while in English units it is measured in foot pound. To convert from English units to metric units or vice versa, a conversion factor is necessary. One newton meter of torque is equal to 0.7376 foot pound or 1 foot-pound is equal to 1.3558 newton meter. If a 1 meter long beam is fixed at the left end, and a 1 newton force is applied, at an angle of 30 degrees to the beam at the right end, let's calculate the torque on the left end. The equation for torque is T equals F times sine theta times L. Substituting the numbers for this problem we get T equals 1 times sine of 30 degrees times 1. Solving for T, we get the result of 0.5 newton meters. Twisting torque refers to the torque that tends to make the shaft rotate around its axis. A force that acts perpendicularly to the shaft's axis but which does not intersect that axis would tend to produce a twisting torque in the shaft. Notice that in the shown example, since the two forces act opposite to each other, they tend to produce a zero bending torque on the shaft. The twisting torque in this case is equal to 2 times F times the distance D from F to the center line of the shaft. A deflecting beam torque wrench is a tool that measures the torque being applied to a bolt or nut. It is made up of an upper beam with a pointer, a lower beam, and a scale to indicate the amount of torque applied. When the deflecting beam torque wrench is used to tighten a nut or bolt, the lower beam flexes as torque is applied, and the upper beam, which has the pointer, remains stationary. The torque value is then read from the position of the pointer on the scale. The advantages of the deflecting beam torque wrench include 1. This torque wrench does not require calibration. 2. It is also usually less expensive than other types of torque wrenches. The disadvantages to using a deflecting beam torque wrench include 1. The user's eyes must read the scale from directly above the wrench. If the scale is read at an angle, a parallax error may occur. A parallax error occurs when the pointer position is misread because it is being viewed at an angle. In this case, the wrong value would seem to line up with the pointer. 2. It is also possible to over-torque the nut or bolt because there is not a positive stop on a deflecting beam torque wrench. There are two types of click type torque wrenches. A fixed type. And an adjustable type. Like the one shown here. The fixed type wrench is a tool often specified by a manufacturer as a special tool, 
and is only capable of gauging one torque value. The adjustable type of click torque wrench can be adjusted over a range of values and is a more general tool. This wrench is adjusted by dialing the handle to the desired torque value. As the handle is turned, it adjusts the spring pressure on the ball in the detent. The click type torque wrench is used to limit the torque that the operator can apply to a given nut or bolt. This wrench has two primary components. One, a deflecting head. And two, a rotating handle to adjust the torque value with. The head has a ball in a detent held in place by spring tension. The spring tension is adjusted by the handle. When the socket is applied to a bolt and torque is applied, the bolt rotates until the torque required to rotate the bolt overcomes the tension of the spring holding the ball in the detent. The head of the wrench then deflects and there is an audible clicking sound. Right there where it clicks. The advantages of the click type torque wrench include that it is useful in situations of low clearances when seeing the scale on a deflecting beam wrench would be difficult. In addition, because the torque is preset, this type of wrench is more consistent than the deflecting beam, which must be monitored continuously while applying torque. It is also more accurate when properly calibrated. The disadvantages are that the wrench must be calibrated on a regular basis to ensure that it is accurate. And it is more expensive than a deflecting beam torque wrench. Snap rings are used in pumps to hold various components in place such as bearings on shafts. Snap ring pliers are tools that are used to remove and replace snap rings. They look the same as regular pliers, except for the shape of their jaws that are designed to fit in the small holes that are used to open and close snap rings. The jaws can also be adjusted to either open or close when the handles are compressed. This allows the same plier to be used for either internal, C-clip, or external snap rings. Some snap ring pliers have a set of interchangeable jaws to accommodate a number of different snap ring configurations. If snap rings come loose from snap ring pliers, they can be propelled through the air with considerable force. It is thus very important to always use a face shield in addition to safety glasses when using snap ring pliers. To use snap ring pliers, it is important to first determine the type of snap ring that will be removed. If the snap ring is of the external type, then the pliers should be set up so that when force is applied to the handles, the pliers jaws open up. If the snap ring is of the internal type, then the jaws should close when force is applied to the handles. Once orientation is determined, the pins at the ends of the jaws of the snap ring pliers are placed in the holes on the snap ring, and the handles are squeezed towards each other. The snap ring can then either be pulled free of, or placed on the component depending on whether the intent was to remove the ring or replace it. When replacing a snap ring, you should avoid applying a force with the pliers on it, until you are ready to put it in place. This would reduce the likelihood that the ring would come loose from the pliers and become a projectile that can potentially harm people standing around, or damage equipment. A strap wrench is a tool used to turn a rotating component without scratching or damaging it. It is made up of a handle with a rubber or nylon strap that wraps around the circular or odd-shaped object. To use a strap wrench, the strap is wrapped around the object, and then it is looped through a keeper mechanism to keep the strap tight when leverage is applied. The strap wrench is used to either turn the object or to keep it from turning so that a nut or bolt can be removed from it. Wheel pullers are used to remove impellers from shafts without damaging either the impeller or the shaft. Because an impeller can become welded to a shaft due to corrosion and other factors, or the impeller may be press fit on the shaft, a wheel puller may be needed to apply force to remove the impeller from the shaft. It is composed of a central screw. With three legs attached at 120 degree increments. The wheel puller allows the impeller to be pulled from its shaft by applying a force axially along the shaft. This minimizes any bending stresses in the shaft or impeller that can cause damage. To use a wheel puller, 
the three legs of the puller must be positioned around the outside edge of the impeller. The central screw is positioned on the end of the shaft and slowly tightened by hand until all slack is taken up. Once the puller is attached firmly to the impeller, a wrench is used to turn the central screw, which applies pressure to the impeller to remove it. While turning the screw on the puller, the impeller must be supported because it can pop loose at any time. Once the impeller is free, remove the puller. A hydraulic press is used to remove and install bearings on shafts. Most bearings are held in place by the force exerted by a difference in dimension between the bearing and the shaft. The shaft's outside diameter will be a couple of thousandths of a millimeter larger than the inside diameter of the inside race of the bearing. This size difference requires a large amount of force to install or remove the bearing, which is accomplished through the use of a hydraulic press. A press is constructed of a frame. A hydraulic ram, a hand pump, and arbor plates to support the inner race of the bearing. To use a hydraulic press to remove a bearing, the first task is to select the correct size set of arbor plates to support the inner race of the bearing. Note, it is critical to ensure that the inner race of the bearing is fully supported by the arbor plates. If the outer race is supported and the inner race is not, you can press the bearing apart and ruin it. The next step is to position the shaft in the arbor plates directly below the ram. Slowly work the hand pump until the ram makes contact with the shaft. Again, ensure that the shaft is aligned straight up and down or the bearing may be damaged. Once the bearing and shaft are aligned and positioned, slowly begin working the hand pump to increase force on the shaft. The shaft should start sliding out of the bearing. Positive control of the shaft should be maintained at all times to prevent it from dropping. Once the shaft is free of the bearing, stop pumping and remove the shaft. To use a hydraulic press to install a bearing, the first task is to select the correct size set of arbor plates to support the inner race of the bearing. Note. It is critical to ensure that the inner race of the bearing is fully supported by the arbor plates. If the outer race is supported and the inner race is not, you can press the bearing apart and ruin it. The next step is to position the bearing on the arbor plates directly below the ram. Place the shaft in the bearing and slowly work the hand pump until the ram makes contact with the shaft. Again, ensure that the shaft is aligned straight up and down or the bearing may be damaged. Once the bearing and shaft are aligned and positioned, slowly begin working the hand pump to increase force on the shaft. The shaft should start sliding into the bearing. Positive control of the shaft should be maintained at all times to prevent it from shifting and getting out of alignment with the bearing. Once the bearing is installed to the correct position, stop pumping, release the press and remove the shaft and bearing. Review questions If L equals 2 meters, F equals 10 newtons, and theta equals 60 degrees, what is the torque applied to the beam? Right answer Which of the following is an advantage of a deflecting beam torque wrench? Right answer Which is not an advantage of the click type torque? Right answer What additional safety precaution is necessary when using snap ring pliers? Right answer. What tool is used to remove the impeller from the shaft without damage to the impeller or the shaft? Right answer. What tool is used to remove a bearing from a shaft when the two components have an interference fit? Right answer. 
Now we have a question on twisting torque. Assuming all the shown members are perfectly rigid, what is the twisting torque acting on the shown shaft? Right answer. Now we have a question on bending torque. Assuming all the shown members are perfectly rigid, what is the bending torque acting on the shown shaft? Right answer. <laughs>